You're gonna wanna step into the middle of the canoe. Oh <laughs> what a beautiful day. All right, I think I see the line. I think, okay, to the, to the, draw, Claire, draw, 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 no, cross draw, cross draw, Claire, cross draw. Hey, so as you can see, Claire and I had a bit of a doozy and the force of the water is too much for us to physically lift the canoe off the rock, even though we're pretty strong. So we're going to set up a Z-drag to help get the boat off the rock. The first thing that you wanna look for is a big sturdy rock or a solid tree. We've got a rock here that's gonna work pretty well for our anchor. So you might be wondering what all of these things are. This is called a pin kit. And every pin kit has a piece of webbing. It's got four beaners, carabiners, and then three pulleys. It also has two prussics. We've also got a trusty throw bag, which is what we're gonna to use to actually get the canoe off the rock. So in order to make this into a loop around our rock, we're gonna tie something called a water knot. So our water knot is essentially an overhand knot with the other tail end of the webbing following through. Then I'm gonna loop this around the rock. I'm gonna to try to get it as low as possible. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the other tail end of the webbing and I'm gonna follow back the way I came with the other tail end, just mirroring my work. So this is called a simple anchor. So the next thing you're gonna do is you're gonna attach a carabiner to your anchor. And we're gonna clip and we're gonna flip so that the gate is pointed towards us and on top for easy access. Next step is to connect our throw bag to our trapped canoe. So a throw bag, if you don't know, is basically a bag of rope. It floats, it'd be really inconvenient if it sank. If you take the tail end, you were to throw the bag, the rope would deploy in a beautiful fashion, unless someone didn't stuff it right, which is always a possibility. So uh, in a second, I'm gonna throw this to Claire and she's gonna attach the rope to the canoe. Um, but first, we need to learn another knot, which is an overhand figure eight on a bike. I'm going to take, uh, what do I want to do here? Ugh. No, no. <laughs> take two. <laughs> You're going to wrap it around once <laughs> and pull it through. And then, just like I did with the water knot, I'm going to follow through. Right back around what we just did. Oh my god, that scared me. We're trying to do a lesson. Okay, so this would theoretically be attached to our canoe so that when we pull on this end of the rope, our canoe would come off the rock. Can you attach this to the canoe? So we've got lots of rope here to work with. We're gonna reach down for our pulley, feed our rope through the pulley, and then attach it back to our beaner. I feel like we should have made our prusik. So the next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna create a prusik. So we've got a piece of rope here that is tied together using a fisherman's knot and we're going to put our prusik onto our loaded rope. So basically how you're gonna do that, put it over top of your loaded rope, holding onto the knot itself and you're going to wrap it around the loaded rope once, twice, thrice. And what's great about a prusik, if you pull on it, it bites on to your rope and then I just have to loosen it a little bit and I can slide it. So you can move it to where you want it. So now we're gonna take our prusik that we've just put onto our loaded rope and we're gonna put it on our carabiner and we're gonna put our pulley back on. Now we can move our prusik down. And so the idea here is as we pull, we can move this down, but we won't lose any of our progress because we've got the prusik in place. Next step is we are going to put another prusik onto our loaded rope a good ways down away from the system that we have here. Mm 
Next, we're gonna take a second beaner and we're gonna clip it and flip it. We're gonna put our pulley just for now for safekeeping. So now we've got one pulley and one beaner at our main anchor point. We've got a second beaner and a second pulley down here. And we've got two prosics on our loaded line. So we've got one, two, three ropes. So every unit of force that I pull, there are three units acting on the boat. Three ropes, one person, three to one. So right now we have a basic three to one mechanical advantage. If I were to pull on this, there's a good chance that our canoe would come free. If part of our system failed for some reason, I'm in a little bit of a dangerous spot in the sense that this has the potential to break and to hit me. So we can take one of our carabiners and one of our pulleys. We can clip and flip to our webbing, lock our beaner in place. And then we've got a classic redirect, so I can actually pull this rope from anywhere. I can be way over yonder and pull, and if something were to fail, I'd be okay. So now that we've got our system and our redirect in place, um, Claire and I are gonna try to free our canoe. And one of us is going to pull from farther back while the other helps to manage this press here so that we're capturing our progress as we pull. The train conductor looked down and saw the canoe and me standing there and was just like, that sucks. Yep. Our canoe! She's okay. So there you have it, folks. We rescued our canoe after our unfortunate whitewater adventure um, using a three to one mechanical advantage commonly known as a Z-drag. And uh, that's your whitewater tutorial for the day. Stay safe out there.